Hi guys, in this video we're going to be talking about water. Um, uh, very quickly, just talking about osmosis and water potential. Okay, um, this is a kind of uh, a basic idea that has a lot of applications, um, but primarily um, uh, following this video we're going to be looking at um, the movement of water between cells and plants and transpiration. Okay. But osmosis affects both animal and plant cells, all kinds of cells really. So um, in this video, um, the, the principles of osmosis can be applied to all types of organisms. Okay, so let's begin. Movement of water. Water is pretty much like any other um, substance that has got particles that can move. Particles will move from a, from a place where they are high in concentration to a place where they are low in concentration. That's the whole idea, okay? Um, but remember, this process is called diffusion. And I guess the important idea is that these particles are not moving because they have an idea of where the high and low concentration is. They are moving randomly and as a result of all these particles moving randomly, eventually we'll reach a point where, um, due to some moving that way, some moving that way, eventually we're going to reach a point where the concentrations of particles in both places is the same. Okay? So if we had a higher concentration here to start with and a lower one here, eventually we'd end up with the same. And because of that, we would, you know, in this case, we would say that there's a net movement of particles in this direction. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So remember, it's just the random movement of particles that leads to diffusion. And this, if you add up all the random movements over time, they will generally always tend to go from a region of where they were higher, higher in concentration overall to a region where they were lower in concentration. And water follows the same principles. Okay, so water is always moving down essentially a concentration gradient if it diffuses. But the reason why it moves is not just simply down to concentration, okay? So we don't, we don't usually refer to the concentration gradient. What we refer to is its water potential, okay? And its water potential is different in many ways to concentration. So let's look at why water moves, all right? So gases, um, such as carbon dioxide, oxygen, their glucose nutrients such as that, waste products such as urea, they're always moving down their concentration gradient. Water we have to look at slightly differently because water is the substance in which all these things are dissolved. Okay, so we have to look at it a little bit differently. Um, so let's start. Now water um, is moving across a partially permeable barrier, okay, partially permeable, which means it might not allow the movement of other things, but it will allow the movement of water, okay, such as cell membranes, okay, so cell membranes, water can easily move through them, you don't need special transport proteins for that, but things like sodium, chlorine, or chloride ions, um, glucose, urea, all these proteins, all these molecules are either too big or too charged to move across the membrane and so they will pro most probably stay where they are for our purposes, okay? So, water. I'm going to draw water as a kind of V-shape, alright, and that's in reference to its structure, like so. Right, H2O, so water is on this side and water is on that side, okay? Now, when 
when water doesn't have anything dissolved in it, pure water has got a water potential of zero. Water potential, now why we say that pure water has a water potential of zero is because if the concentration of water is the same on both sides, there's not going to be any net movement. There's not going to be any tendency of water to go from there to there overall or there to there overall. Even though, remember, there are water molecules moving around all the time. Some are going this way, some are going that way. But overall, the numbers going this way and that way balance. Okay, so no net movement. There is no diffusion. There is no, therefore, osmosis. So pure water, pure water has a water potential of zero. Okay, pure water has got a water potential of zero, right? But now let's look at what happens when we put a solute in there. Now, when we talk about a solute, we're talking about something that will dissolve in water. And when we say dissolve, we are talking about a very special phenomenon, okay, which is often overlooked. And and it's probably because of this reason, if you have any misunderstanding about osmosis, it probably comes from this. When something dissolves in that, so let's say now we have um, sodium plus, okay? Okay, so sodium's got a, po a positive charge, so let's just say that sodium a positive charge. And what happens is that because we put this sodium in there, all the water molecules that were here before are going to do something very special. They are now going to orientate their, remember water's a polar molecule, it's got a slightly negative side and a slightly positive side. Okay, so all these water molecules are now going to orient, orientate their negative sides towards this pos very highly positively charged Thing. Okay, and they form layers and layers of water molecules around this sodium. Okay, so now all the water molecules that were there are now kind of tightly arranged around this sodium. This sodium ion has kind of pulled all these water molecules towards it, and all these water molecules surround it, and this is sodium dissolving in water. Okay, sodium is now a solute in the water. Okay, and I want you to remember this. Okay, whenever you think of something dissolved in water, you've got to have this picture in your mind of all these water molecules, you know, forming these shells around the sodium, you know, in kind of three dimensions. But what happens is, because of that, what's happened to all these you know, all the water molecules are now here. So the effective kind of concentration of water is now lower, okay, because all of them are now surrounding the sodium. And because of that, water has a tendency to move from this place to this place. Okay, so whenever you have a solute, um, this is not a technical um, idea, not a technical term, but the effective concentration of water, you've got to think of it that way, that, that now all that water that was moving around freely is now kind of concentrated around the sodium, and so the effective concentration everywhere else has gone down. Okay? And because of that, you'll have a tendency, so now we've got a high concentration here and a rel relatively lower concentration of water on this side. So there's going to be a movement of water from this place to that place. And why did that happen? Because of, the so because of the presence of sodium. Because the presence of sodium attracted all the water molecules to it, and now we've got to kind of um, compensate for that effect. Okay, we've got to compensate, and, and because of that, you're not going to get. So all these water molecules are stuck here. Now remember I said that before, there were some going that way and some going this way. Well, now you're not going to have any going this way, because they're all kind of stuck to the sodium ion. And so you're only going to get movement of water in that direction. And so, so you're going to get a net movement of water in this direction. Remember, it was moving that way before, but 
because of the sodium ion, no longer do they move that way. They're all attracted to the sodium ion, okay? So, you've got net movement in that way. So, because of the sodium ion, the potential of water to um, move here, from here to here, is now much lower than there to there. And because of that, we say that here, because of the presence of the solute, the water potential is negative, okay? And because here we don't have any solute, the water potential is less negative, actually, you know, it's higher. So we can say it's negative or lower. It's never positive, yeah? It's either zero or less. So pure water has got a water potential of zero, but as soon as you add the solute, it goes down. Okay, so here we can say that it's higher or it's um, less negative. But what we can't say that it's positive because pure water is zero. As soon as you add sol uh, any solute, it starts to go down. All right, so relatively, because of the solute, the water potential here is lower water potential here is relatively higher in comparison and therefore water will move in that direction. But remember, the reason for that is because these water molecules are now attracted to the solute and therefore there's less net movement in that direction, therefore there's going to be more net movement comparatively from that, from this place to that place. Okay? Now, I hope that's made sense. So, water, it might be a good time to make the definition then, that solutes, solutes cause water potential to decrease, okay? So any solute causes water, water molecules to interact with it, therefore the water has less tendency to move away and therefore solutes cause water potential to decrease. And water always moves from a higher, not a positive, but relatively higher, from a higher or less negative, or less negative water potential to a lower or more negative water potential. This is a, a really important idea, okay? So water always moves from a, a high water potential to a low water potential. What's causing a low water potential is the presence of more solute than here, okay? So this is just one example where we've got one particle of a solute but remember, usually the, the situation will be more complex than that. But it's basically that if this place has more solute than this place, water will tend to move from here to there, simply because here we've got more water molecules kind of arranged around the solute, so there's less of them free to move. Okay, I hope this is making sense. All right, so that was the explanation. What it comes down to ultimately is that a solute causes a low water potential or a lowering of the water potential. And if you lower the water potential, you're going to cause water to move into that place from other places that will have a higher water potential. Okay, so let's just get rid of all this extra stuff. Okay. Now, when we're talking about solutes, so in this case I, I had a sodium ion, but it could be anything, okay? Anything that's polar, hydrophilic, charged, i.e. ions, 
okay, anything like this will, co will affect the water potential. And the presence of these things will lower the water potential, causing movement of water into that area. Okay, so let's think about what these solutes could be that we might be encountering. Glucose, any ion, okay, anything with a charge on it, chloride, um, amino acids, uh, sodium, urea, phosphate, all of these things can be charged. And if they are charged, they are an ion, and an ion will attract water. And if it attracts water and dissolves, anything that is dissolving is going to affect the water potential, lowering it. Okay, so glucose, ions, amino acids, urea, waste product, okay, um, proteins, proteins with lots of high, uh, you know, soluble proteins, soluble proteins, i.e. in that, that gigantic, compared to the molecule of, uh, you know, compared to a sodium ion, protein is, you know, massive, and on the surface of that soluble protein are going to be all hydrophilic amino acids, and all of them are going to be interacting with water, so proteins affect the water potential a lot, yeah? So proteins, all these things that can dissolve, if they're dissolving, that means that they're creating a shell of water around them. If they're creating a shell of water around them, they are affecting the water potential, lowering it, effectively lowering the concentration, water that will then move into that place, net, overall. Okay, so that's the basics. Um, I can't believe I did all that without saying osmosis. So that's the process of osmosis, all right? When water moves from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential, but I hope I've helped you understand what that means. Any presence of solute will cause a lowering of the water potential. Let's just look at a, um, another example. So we'll have a few solutes. Okay, so the red can be solutes. Okay. Now, in this case, if we've got water molecules around, even though we might have the same number of water molecules in, in both places, water will tend to move from the higher water potential to the lower water potential. Which one has got more solute? This one. Which one has the lower water potential? Therefore, this one, because remember, all these water molecules are going to be forming a shell around these solutes, so effectively, you know, there's going to be less net movement of water away from this area, and we're going to have more movement from this place to that place, simply because here the water potential is lower, because we've got more solute. And here, we don't say it's a high water potential, we, we can either say that it's a higher water potential or that it's a less negative water potential. And therefore, net movement of water by osmosis is going to be in that direction. Okay, now this is a more realistic situation. Yep, because, you know, in biological systems, you're rarely dealing with pure water. You know, everything's water in all places is going to have something dissolved in it. But it's about how much and what stuff is dissolved in it. More stuff dissolved, lower water potential, water's going to move in that direction. Okay, guys, so um, I'll come back uh, with another video probably on um, movement of water in the plants. Okay, guys, so good luck. Keep working. You'll be all right.